welcome to the show. Who doesn't love a new intro? G'day there. My name is Hannah and this is The Race Side. We have an exciting day today, don't we? I have been preparing all week for today. It's going to be incredible. Uh, we're doing a rewatch of Kenobi, which is, I couldn't have timed it better. Uh, just last night, uh, well, last night for me, this morning, I think, in the same day as US, uh, we got announced that there's going to be a new uh, Kenobi behind the scenes uh, show, which looks really cool. Uh, it's called uh, A Jedi's Return. I believe that's what it's called. And I, I put it on my social media because I found it really funny because the first time I saw it, like I saw it in the, you know, the Disney Day, like promotional stuff. And I thought it was like not... Uh, uh, behind the scenes I thought it was going to be like an, a movie or I thought that was like the announcement of the sequel or, or like season two or something I thought it was a new piece of content but behind the scenes nevertheless is going to look really cool and of course even just the trailer is very emotional looks very good I mean obviously with the return of Hayden and Ewan um it, you know just just those factors alone is makes it a really emotional return beautiful return to Star Wars for them which is amazing um so that only came out like 20, within 24 hours, within about 12 hours about that came out. So I, you know, perfect timing for a Kenobi rewatch. Uh, so that comes out that behind the scenes, uh, I'm assuming it's just, just like a one documentary, maybe like an hour long. I don't know. Um, that comes out the 8th of September, which is a Thursday. So we're going to do two shows, th this two part series. We're doing the first three episodes today and the next three next week. And then after that, uh, is when this behind the scenes Kenobi show comes out, which or show documentary, which looks amazing. Absolutely, Caleb, welcome, Geek Ledger. I'm gonna I'm gonna get that name down. Amazing, welcome, welcome. Uh, hello there, good day there, Tundra Portal. I, that's how you say that. Phenomenal. Uh, yes, about this documentary, Sevilla. I knew it was a documentary, but when I saw people confused thinking it was season two teaser, maybe because I was waiting for the documentary since the series was released. Yeah, I think I think it's like that it was kind of coming. Everyone was kind of talking about, oh, when are we going to get a Kenobi gallery? Uh, but I have to say this title of uh, the Jedi Returned. I be Is that what it's called? I f keep forgetting the name of it. Uh, a Jedi Returned Um is fent much easier to say and much more engaging to me than like Disney Gallery, the men, but da, 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 you know, in all the words. Seems like a tongue twister usually when it says Disney Gallery. So this one sounds a lot better. And I think that's why people were confused is because it wasn't just like blatantly, oh, this is a Disney Gallery. Um, it, it was like another title. So everyone's like, oh my God, it's a title of a movie because it wasn't Disney Gallery. Jedi's Return. Yes, there we go. Uh, but it looks really interesting. I'm very, very excited for that. It's going to be really, really interesting. You made it. You made it. Very good. I, unfortunately, I missed your show today, Joel and Matthew, because I was – there's so many technical things I had to set up for this show. I've been kind of planning in it in my head for a week, but then this morning I spent about two hours trying to figure out how to set this whole thing up. You'll see shortly we've actually got a really cool uh, process of how we've set everything up, and I've got – I'm going to watch it on my screen and then we've got the time code on the screen as well and how to get all that down. But welcome. So glad you can make it. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, I love these behind the scenes documentaries too. Um, I mean, if you if you saw my light and magic uh, kind of topical video on it and why it was so good, you know, I'm very much like every piece of behind the scenes Star Wars content is like my favorite. I remember as a kid having the, like the DVDs of the prequels and like my favorite thing was like, yes, watch the movie. But my favorite thing was watching like the hours of behind the scenes footage they had and how they made shots, how they made the CGI, how they made, you know, wrote, wrote it all. You know, I love all that kind of information. So I think this is going to, they're really going to make this an emotional documentary because it's, it's such a big journey that, you know, the, the character of like Obi-Wan went on and like even just Ewan, you know, a lot of his, com you know, comments in interviews and things is, has been about, um, coming back to play Obi-Wan and, you know, the prequels weren't so well received uh, when they first came out and, you know, the, now they, you know, the people like me and some, maybe some of you as well, you know, kind of grew up with the prequels and now we're like adults. So now we're like, no, 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 these movies are amazing. So it's kind of this funny, um, yeah, funny cycle it's gone through. And I think Ewan and Hayden are really appreciative these days 
of, you know, these kids that grew up with the prequels and now we're older and, and we, we have the platform to voice our love for it. So I think this documentary is going to be a really moving one of their kind of journey with Star Wars and their relationship with Star Wars, but, but also just getting, yeah, just getting details on how they shot things, how they did things, how they made things. It's going to be fantastic. We need documentary for the right. Well, I should have filmed it today because honestly I was spending hours trying to set this all up and how we're going to watch it today. It's so funny, but um, maybe one day, maybe one day, maybe one day on a Patreon. That's where we'll find that. Um, so yeah, we'll just, we'll just kind of hang out for a couple minutes here because uh, wait, waiting for everyone to trickle trickle in uh and then we'll get started shortly because this is going to be a long evening now again if you so i'm going to pop the time code on the screen of the episode and uh you can you know have your disney plus on the same you know other tab or you know different device and you can pop that on uh at the same time so we can watch it all together and pretty much if if you're one of those people in the movies that don't like people talking then I'm not sure if this is the show for you because I'm going to be talking the whole time. I'm going to be like just saying my thoughts and and comments about every scene we have. But it's been out for a while. You've had time to rewatch a whole bunch in your own piece of quiet. So this is more of like a just a talk through and a breakdown and appreciation of the Kenobi show. So it's going to be fantastic. I'll uh, we're going to start very very soon. Welcome welcome in. We're gonna we're gonna start this rewatch together very soon. If you've just joined. Make sure you comment down below. As I said, the whole time I'm going to be chatting about the episodes. So make sure you're sharing your thoughts, feelings, and, you know, just moments that you really love as well in the in the comments. Uh, it's going to be amazing. So the way we're going to set it up is going to be like this. So I'll show you what it's going to look like. There we are. So there's our little time code. Now that's a live, it's a, it's a little bit out of, out of, there we go. Now that's a that's a live shot of the time code of the episode I'm on. So that's just that's not a separate clock. It's an actual uh, shot of the episode timer that we're on. So you can get it right to the dot, right right on the second that I'm watching it as well. Uh, it's going to be really really fun. Um, I'm I'm excited for today because I, I to be honest, I, the last time I rewatched Kenobi was. Oh, is that pretty much the week after it aired, after the finale? I did a big rewatch. I honestly haven't watched it since. So, you know, not a lot of time. It's only been about a month, but uh, still, I'm sure I'm going to pick up pick up things I've never seen here. Joel, you legend. Yeah, right. You never knew the hate for the prequels until I started using the internet. Well, it's interesting because, I mean, the internet wasn't around back then. So it's interesting how that, um, you know, it kind of came about and it kind of just rose. But then again, it's hard to tell. Like there's only a few people, you know, people can be hating on something in Star Wars, but there's a vast majority that don't voice their things. They're just, they're just in doing their own thing, loving Star Wars. So, um, you know, there were haters, but it wasn't, it wasn't um, like the whole fandom. Hey, it wasn't the whole fandom. Caleb, I never understood the Disney gallery naming scheme like the Marvel documentaries and Marvel Studios assembled. I would have called them Lucasfilm Beyond the Stars or something. Yeah, like I feel like that's what they were trying to do with the whole like Disney gallery. But like I, I found those documentaries, they weren't a gallery. So it was, the Disney gallery, was I've always found an interesting title. But I agree with you. I think there should be something else out there that could have been a better title for it. I rewatch uh, a bunch of clips like Jewel and whatnot. Yeah, actually, I you know, sometimes like it'll just kind of pop up on my social media feed. I'm like, oh, yeah, that was a good scene. So I'm interested to see what else, can, like what can we pick up today that we haven't seen before? I'm That's our goal as a collective. What can we watch today that we haven't seen before? It's going to be really interesting. I haven't rewatched, but I've seen a lot of times everyone in Vader fights. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Okay, so... Make sure we'll be starting in very shortly. So make sure grab your Disney Plus up on separate screen on your Xbox or PlayStation or something. Set it up because we'll be starting very, very shortly. Um, and again, like I said, we're going to, I'm going to be chatting the whole way through. I'm, I'm going to, I'm, it's going to be hard not to talk about it because um, I'm sure there's going to be many, many things that we're going to realize that we haven't seen. Now, in between episodes as well, we will have like a five minute period of just like whew, taking a breather. Uh, I'm, you know, I'll go grab some snacks and that's a great time for you to go grab some snacks and, you know, just go take a breath for a second and uh, have a quick break for a couple of minutes before we start the next episode. So we've got three episodes and then 
about five minute breaks in between each episode just to stretch your legs and such. Um, also, new chair, upgrade, a bit of an upgrade to the Rayside studio. God, studio, but new chair. I thought that was a good timing to do get a new chair because we're, we're here for like three hours today. So good timing, good timing. Um, all righty, let's get started shortly. Make sure you got your Disney Plus up. Again, if you join, I'll say this multiple times through the show, but if people join midway through, make sure you, one, make sure you welcome them. And two, uh, I'll be constantly saying sync it up. I mean, it says it on the screen there, you know, the time code and sync it up with your Disney Plus. Um, so hopefully everyone can join in along with us. It'll be really, really fun. Uh, last couple of comments. I think originally planned for every behind the scenes of every Disney Plus show called Disney. Yeah, I agree. But the Marvel did their own thing in Disney, I guess, just abandoned that idea. Yeah, yeah. They just they just went off to their own thing. Oh, I think they realized Disney Gallery wasn't the greatest title for it. Yes, that's a good reminder. Do not press the skip button. Do not press the skip button. Um, let's bring it a bit closer here so I can still see the comments and things as we go along. Awesome. Well, as I say, we're going to get started real, real shortly. So... Tuck in, grab your snacks, make sure you got your beverages and yet a blanket or something. I don't know. It's probably actually, it's kind of hot in the US at the moment. Maybe don't get a blanket. Get comfortable. We're about to begin. So make sure your Disney Plus is up. Episode one. I've realized I've made it a little bit confusing because I've called these parts, but episodes, but the episodes of Kenobi's are actually called part one. So this is the part one of the Rayside show, but we're doing the first three episodes. Very confusing, I know, but we'll give it a go. We'll give it a shot. Okay. I guess I do a countdown. I guess we'll do a countdown for this, hey? Um, so make sure you got your Disney Plus up. Comment below if you join into the show um, and notice any, you know, details. All throughout the show, we're going to notice anything new. Let me know what you can pick up. But let's get started in five, four, three, two, one. Thank you. Yep, there's the timer. Yeah, that's a good... I like forgetting all this whole scene. Now, also, this is interesting because the first time I saw this was at Celebration. It was with with a room of 10,000 people. And 10,000? Maybe maybe six 7,000. And because I went to the, the Obi-Wan Kenobi premiere in Anaheim, uh, which was a special event. They announced it like on the day. It was incredible. And just sitting here watching this with like, yeah, thousands of people was just an experience, just in inexplicable. Because literally every scene, everything you see is like amazing. So everyone, it, just every five seconds, everyone was just screaming. I do like how they did this intro and like kind of, yeah, recap. It's it, it made it emotional because even though it's like we know all this, like we've seen all this, we understand the story, but it's like, oh, my gosh, this is like, you know, this is where he came from. Hello, Alex. Welcome. Welcome. We're, current, we're doing an Obi-Wan rewatch, um, which I was just mentioning how we saw it at the premiere together. So fantastic to have to have you here. We did have a lot of fun. It was so exciting. It was so, so cool. And do you remember, Alex, it was just wild with, like, thousands of people just screaming it, being like, oh, my God. It was fantastic. It was so enjoyable. Insane. I think also for people, for, like, casual fans, maybe this would have been good. Because like what we were saying before, you know, maybe not a lot of people fancied the prequels. You know, there's a lot of original trilogy fans out there. Um, so this is like a good recap of like, yeah, what's, what's really happened just before we see him. 
because obviously hardcore fans, we know like these movies like word for word, but this is great for casual fans to be like, okay, here's where we are. Mmm, barbecue Danikin. Yeah, that's a good point. How many people were kind of, yeah, who was brought into it but needed that refresher of like, yeah, the, the, the like what I'm saying, the prequel. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, they did. Hey, they did. And I kind of got, I, when we, when they noticed that highlight of Qui-Gon, I was like, and we got to all the, like the last episode. I'm like, Qui-Gon hasn't been on the show yet. I was always really disappointed, but then it was a great little cameo in the end there, obviously. I can't wait to watch that again, to be honest. Mm, very good blend. I agree. Aunt Beru, greatest character. Yeah, that's an awesome. That was awesome. Yeah. It's a good, it was a really good overview. That's a good point. Like maybe people are brought in by like, you know, what if people watch the resistance for the first time? Like that's the first piece of Star Wars they watch. That could happen for kids. Definitely. Totally agree. Oh, that's right. We start here. The, uh, the Jedi temple. Again, if you, if you're watching, if, if you're watching just this and you don't have it on the screen, I'll try and keep you up to date of where we're at. It's order 66. It's intense moment. Which is awesome because, you know, the, the prequel stories of the kids, of the Padawans, was always like a funny one. You know, we've got that classic quote, Master Skywalker, what are we going to do? Like, you know, so this is like an awesome, really puts us in, immerses us into where we are. You can see on the screen just a little bit of color of like what I'm watching, which is funny. That was insane. Yeah, I was about to mention the theme as well. The, the Kenobi theme. I can't believe we just, they, they just dropped it. They're like, oh yeah, here it is. And like, here's John Williams in the orchestra to play this theme for you. It's like, what? Yes, Matthew, welcome, welcome. Again, it's pretty self-explanatory. We're still on episode one. Time code is, oh, there it is on the screen. Yeah. Good editing. Da, 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 da. Nice Obi Wan theme there. Again, Alex Katana, Asan Omar. Who else was there? Do I think Dom Matthew was there, and we all saw that live. That was insane. Ten years later, here we are. The costuming in in Tatooine is pretty good. Very diverse. It's it's funny to see Tatooine. I mean, I know we just saw it in Boba, but it's cool to see it more in depth in this show, more detailed, I guess. That's true. That's right. The publishing panel. Instead, of, I felt I felt like you were there. Were you, were you there in my mind? That's true. There will be more. There will be more celebrations. I was kind of nervous, yeah. The Inquisitor theme, very nice, very good. Dun, dun. Which is why I kind of, the one one thing I say about the series, I wish we got more Inquisitors, more Grand Inquisitor, more F Fifth Brother, is that his name? 
I just want more. Because, like, that thing was awesome. Dun, 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 dun. It's, like, so dramatic. Funny you say that because I do actually have some more, but I'm scared. Like there's a couple, there's a couple down the bottom here, but I'm like, are they going to be stale? That was like a month ago. I mean, it is pretty processed. Surely you would like, it would. I think I've got a couple here, but shouldn't, wouldn't they be stale? I should have those out though. I love that. Me too. This is a great performance by the Grand Inquisitor, Rupert. Uh, I always forget his last name. I always say Rupert Grint, but that's that's Ron Weasley. Who? What's his last name? Rupert. I can never remember his name. But he's a great performer. Love his performance and portrayal of the Grand Inquisitor. Like, whatever about his head size, incredible performance. I know, I know. It was for the show. It was for the premiere of my show. I had to do something dramatic. <gasps> Rupert Friend. Rupert Friend. There we go. Yes, I keep I keep getting mixed up with Rupert Grint. And I and that's um <laughs> that's Ron Weasley. I'm like, that's definitely not Ron, Ron Weasley. G'day there. Hannah Solo. Oh, I like it. Uh, to the Light and Dark Siders, how we're doing? We're doing good. We're partway through uh, episode one. It's going fantastically. Bring back all the memories. I've like forgotten how this whole show starts. It's awesome. But welcome, Dave. Make sure everybody welcomes Dave. Yes, I agree with that. The, the, his his speech is very very good. Again, I feel like they really wrote this show well for people getting back into Star Wars or new Star Wars fans. Like this whole speech is like laying out the Jedi Order really well. And, you know, why people hate the Jedi and why these, like, Inquisitors and Dark Side users are trying to get them. Like, it's a really great speech for contextualizing the Jedi Order and the, and the Light and Dark Side. I guess they're complaining about how the Grand Inquisitor looked different in the end. Yeah. I mean... It's like, I agree that it's not the shape of his head of what it should be, but also it, I thought it would bother me more. But, I mean, he wasn't even in the show all that much, so it's kind of kind of okay. With all the rest that's happening in the show, it's like, you don't notice it. I always wonder, now that we know all the context of, of the third sister, like, was she trying to hunt him? No, in the end, she's like, can you help me and all this? Maybe, w was she always trying to find him for help? And was she always trying not to kill him? I don't know. I don't know. Welcome, Felix. Welcome to the show. Check out the time code on the screen. We're in episode one. We are enjoying it. Make sure everybody welcomes Felix to the stream. Fantastic to have you here. <laughs> oh my gosh, you haven't been out of the house yet? What are you going to do at 9 p.m.? 9 p.m. But I love it. I'll, I'll catch you soon, Matthew. Come back in. We're here for like three hours. So literally, go out and come back. We'll still be here. <laughs> She's trying to get. Uh, to get him close to Vader and kill him. He's trying to get to him to get close to get close to Vader and kill him. Yeah, right. 
So, yeah, okay. But it's like, what did that change or was that always her goal? Yes, we are loving it. I always, this was like a cool way to, we're up to the scene where he's cutting the meat of something. I always thought this was a cool scene. Like a cool way to be like, oh, he is making it a tough. Great. Very, you know, very subtle scene with the, you know, this is only half of the guy in front of him. Very subtle, but, you know, says a lot about the galaxy. And obviously Tatooine. Tatooine's always been like this. Would have preferred the movie with a big budget, or do you think the series was the way to go? That's a good question. Like... With Star Wars content, I always am just happy with what's given to us. If we get a series, fantastic, and it's and it's great. But if I like, if I was like the producer of this show, I think I would have done a movie. And it doesn't have to be a trilogy. It doesn't have to be a trilogy. I think you know a one like like Lord of the Rings. I think Lord of the Rings movies are like two and a half hours. Like imagine like a two and a half our Obi-Wan Kenobi movie. Like, that would be awesome. And and this could, you know, with a bit of shaping, this could have easily fit into that format as, like, a really big budget movie. And I think that would have been, to be honest, amazing in the box office. So, but also in saying that, I'm super happy with the series. And I think, I don't know, it's kind of satisfying just to, to yeah, get in these kind of stories. But I think it would have worked either way, to be honest. Welcome, Felix. <laughs> you would have gone for the movie yeah it is an interesting conversation if it's like you know would have been better as a movie <laughs> I'm already I have a stash of snacks here and I'm already going to get into it there we go there we go I'm more, and I still, I know I have these Kenobi Pringles, but I'm like so scared about eating them. <laughs> she was very impressed. Very, very impressed. Got, definitely got points there. Thank you for asking, Dave. <laughs> I love his home. He's, we're at, you know, the cave, the Kenobi cave. Gee, I'm making a mess already. I'm going to be doing a messy show and making a mess. Love that little soup thing he makes that, like, expands a little. Very Ray Skywalker. That's funny how I call them Ray Skywalker. Well, she is. But, you know, yeah, it, I like that. I think that was a nice little, like, not, in, I don't think it's like a, you know, it's not like a, oh, Ray. It's just like a, oh, that's a nice little thing that like, you know, we see Ray, we like meet her and she's like in the desert making her little rising bread. And like we see Kenobi and he's like in the desert making his little rising little soup thing. <laughs> this whole scene with the jaw is just fantastic like good Star Wars comedy nice light way to open it because obviously the show gets quite deep and even this episode gets deep The way he says Jedi there as well, spot on. 
Like, spot on in terms of the, the Alec Guinness likeness there is so good. I remember watching this. <laughs> this is the biggest compliment ever. Thank you. Oh, this flashback, that's right. I like how they used shots from the prequels as like his dreams and flashbacks. That's awesome. Mm, good outfit, eh? Great outfit. But what I was going to say before is, when this was showing, when I was watching this for the first time, I was so certain, here comes Qui-Gon. Yeah. Oh, well, that's right, because he says it. But even just before it, I was like, Qui-Gon's going to come, and he's like in this little cave, shop in his cave. But how fascinating that they mention Qui-Gon this early and we don't see him to the last eight seconds of the of the last episode. If you're watching along, what do you let me know if you've got any snacks handy. Although it is like dinner time, it's like meal time in America. Or maybe it's uh, lunch or breakfast somewhere else in the world. But let me know what you're snacking on while watching this or eating. Agreed. Agreed. Well said, Dave. Well said. I love his gloves. Look at his little gloves. I love how Owen gets so startled and he like, he, he, Owen only lost him for like five seconds and he was like, ah, Luke. This is quite a beautiful scene, actually. And talk about setting up that Luke is going to be like a main character in the series. He's in the trailer. This is how the first episode starts. You know, you really feel like he's going to be a, a bigger part, which, I mean, he's a big part because everyone's very much like, oh, I've got to stay here for Luke. But, you know, we get a lot more of Leia. Such a good thing. And that makes sense. It's purely just because I'm obsessed with Qui-Gon. I was like, can he be in the show like every moment? But the way he comes in and like, yeah, you weren't ready. What do you say? You know, I was always here. You just weren't ready to see me yet. Like brilliant, brilliant. And he had to go through so many, you know, personal trials to kind of get there to see Qui-Gon. So smart. I would agree. I would agree. Favorite everyone episode? Mm. I think maybe... I think... 
I think maybe six. It has to be six because of the one because of the jewel and it's incredible, but also the the connection and discussion of like Leia and Kenobi and kind of their connection and talking about and I can Padme like that just made me so emotional. That's probably my favorite scene actually as well. Like when Obi Wan like kneels down when they're leaving when he's leaving and like talks about Anakin and Padme. That's just. Breaks breaks me down every time. Oh, this was insane. This actually, can I change my answer, Dave? This is my favorite scene because I, when we first saw Alderaan, I can't believe I was eating my bloody chocolate bar while <laughs> this was on. But this scene, I was trying so hard not to cry. I did very much well up and to you. I have such a connection with Leia. One of my favorite characters. I'm just insane that we're gonna get her like the second we saw. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like we both that's why I was like, don't look, don't you know, I had Omar on my right, you Alex on my left. I was like, don't look. Because I feel like we're all tearing. <laughs> but yeah, this was just I can't believe I still can't believe this is like what we like we got this. Ah, oh, see that I feel so sorry for because I didn't hear a single peep. I didn't even hear that it was like a a rumor. I didn't hear a peep of it. And so this moment was just extremely, extremely mind blowing to me. Insane. Oh, especially in the music. Oh. And a little run, and she's so adventurous and curious. Like, the, arguably, this is like my favorite Star Wars music. This is so good, so uplifting, young and curious, just perfect for her. Also, now that I'm listening to that again, I really think that is in the same key as her Princess Leia theme. I'm gonna look that up after. after. Try, try my test my music knowledge. Mm. Got the exact right kind of yeah, exact right sass and curiosity and yeah, attitude. <laughs> Bria. Bria, fantastic character. I, I hope we can see her in something else. Like, even, you know, maybe, hopefully we see Bale in Andor. Maybe that we could see a bit of Bria for a moment too. But this great character. Great, great, both great actors and great characters. Lola. Gotta love Lola. I love how Lola's like the equivalent of like an iPad for a kid or something or like a phone. No more. Like TV, like no more screens for the rest of the day. No more Lola. <laughs> Good line. See this tone here where she stops and says, I'm sorry, mother, I won't do it again. Does that not sound exactly like Little Annie in Phantom Menace? Exactly like him. Like when she says, you know, will I ever see you again? I know she says that later on. But it's like just the tone of her voice sounds exactly like Anakin. Oh, yeah. So much independence.
I didn't. I didn't. But I feel like it's going to be there for a while. So I'm currently saving up because 85, which is about, I think it's about 65 US. But I'm saving up for it because I really, really want her. She, I think she would look good in my background as well. But I really, really want her. She looked awesome. She's a good size too. It's like a solid, it's like a solid size Lola. This is a great conversation with Owen. <laughs> good burn. <laughs> Such a good burn. Mm. Good conversation. Very powerful. <laughs> good point, right? Don't throw it. It's not cheap. Oops. To be honest, I found it a little tricky understanding the the inquisitors like in, intentions for a, like the good first few episodes i can't really work them out to be honest <laughs> that was that was rough <laughs> it was pretty shocking when that first happened No one's so rugged, isn't he? Pretty rough here. See, I think I really think Moses's performance here is so good. Excellent performance. See, this whole speech makes a lot more sense now, knowing that, you know, she's a, she was a Padawan. It makes a lot more sense. Mm. Yeah, I agree, Joel. I like it. It all kind of comes circle. It all makes sense. Get that tongue code to like. I don't like that's not much on the screen, right? Okay. Yep. There we go. Hmm. It's all very full circle. Like this, literally, this whole speech makes total sense to me. Like, because, and that's what I was just saying before. It's like, the, so I couldn't figure out like what their motive was or like why. She was, like, mad and why, like, they didn't like. Like, I never understood that until I'm, like, uh, like, kind of put the dots together. Maybe that was intentional, but I don't know. I feel like they could have explained it a little bit better of, like, why they're, like, yeah, why these, like, have issues. 
I guess that, I guess, yeah, I guess now I'm thinking about it. It kind of makes sense where it's like, it's a mystery now. It's like, why does she want Kenobi? And then we find out in the end. Yeah. The wrong places. So that might, see, what, what do you, th when he asks her, what what do you think you'll gain? And she says, what I'm owed. That makes sense because of that whole, she's trying to get Kenobi so Vader like finds her or get, comes to her and then, and then she can kill Vader. That's, and kill him is what, that makes sense. Ha ha ha. That's true. That's true. Well, I'm surprised they didn't just kind of, <sighs> yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. What was the issue there? We know. I wonder how that could be answered. So we're back in Alderaan. Again, great, great Alderaan theme music layer, layer Alderaan theme. I don't know. And if you like Alderaan, if you like Princess Leia, make sure you read <laughs> Leia, Princess of Alderaan. Fantastic book. Claudia Gray. Bail Organa. Can we talk about, like, give, name me a more wholesome Star Wars character. Bail Organa. I want him to teach me everything about life. He is so cool. We got a little garment. Best dad. Best dad. So good. He's so cool. He's so cool. You know, and talk about a great scene. This I this this is awesome. You know, we see three PO back there. Fantastic. Yeah, this actually conversation between Bale and like I don't know if that's another is that if that's another senator or family member. I think it's a family member, and and they just had this brief conversation where Bale's like trying to talk about the slavery, and they're like, "Uh, we don't want to talk about this. We just want to eat food." I think that just that is an excellent example of what Andor is going to be about. To be honest. I think it's going to be an excellent little, like, that's what it's going to be. There's people like Bail Organa, Mon Mothma, and, you know, a handful of other political figures that are like, things are still not okay. And I think a majority of the Senate are going to be just, the, the planets, the people are exhausted from the war, from the Clone War, and they just do not want that again. So they just become, like, just submissive to Palpatine and be like, let's just eat good food and not talk about politics. And I think that's why the Empire was so good. You know, obviously Palpatine was so cunning to get into power like that. But I think by that time, people were so worn out that they didn't want to challenge him. They didn't want to challenge anything. And I think that's what Ander will be. And we'll see Mon Mothma, you know, trying to show that to people, tell that to people, that you need to be concerned. There's all these issues in the galaxy, but no one's going to listen because everyone's just going to be like sick of it kind of thing. My hair like wrapping around. Ah, oh, as do I. It's so it's so good. I've like forgotten so many of this these scenes. The brother-in-law, yeah, brother-in-law. Oh, I believe that lady was tapping into the force to read her cousin. That's an excellent theory. Cause she does. It's like. She never knows that she's th using the force and probably what the force is, but she always has that uh, kind of very connective ability. You know, when she talks about in Return of the Jedi, she kind of, she's like, you know, somehow I knew, somehow I always knew. And that's that same feeling. That's a cool take there. I might agree with you there, Alex. I like that. I like that. And this is a great little one-on-one -on -one here between Bale and Leia. People in itchy clothes arguing. Great, great line. I 
Oh, this is a really nice scene. <laughs> Like, you can really tell. Like, he really spent work with Vivian trying to create this relationship and, and chemistry on screen of this father-daughter. And it's it just comes across so well. So good. I like Bale. He never appeared in the OG trilogy, but I think uh, the construction of his character across prequels, Clone Wars, Rebels, Rogue One, and on here, man, I really like it. Yeah. Like, he's, he's such a wholesome character, like I said, you know. And I think he really stands for so much. And, like, you know, we get to know Padme so well because of Anakin and because, you know, you know, that's just how the prequels were. But it's like, Bale was just one of those people in the Clone Wars as well. But it was just as, just as interesting and, you know, just as ha had that justice, you know, strive for justice as other characters. But, he, yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> I'm sure she says, why are you here, not who are you? So random. Flee, again, so random. I, I can understand people's complaints of the scene, being like, how are they not catching her? She's like 10. If these are like trained assassins and they're like struggling to like jump over logs and things, like it is kind of funny. But oh well, Star Wars. People get too angry. People just want to be angry at Star Wars. It's like, D just leave. It's fine. It's kind of funny. Ooh, that's, yeah, I like, that's a good sentence. It would be a pivotal moment in Star Wars canon. I agree. I agree. Ah, the all-important call to Obi-Wan. Mm. Love the OG com link. It's cool. Yeah, I totally agree. It's interesting how much they... Yeah, they, you know, they really try and prioritize her. And, like, they, they made it obvious because everyone here is very, like, I, I like... I have to stay for Luke and they're like, she's just important. She's just as like, you know, all that. Like just this dialogue here, if you're watching along, is very much about that. Yeah. See, he's like, you know, she's just as important. Wow. wow. I said that exact time he said that. Wow. <laughs> just as important. I totally agree, Joel. Cool ship. I don't know what it's called, but it's, this is a cool ship, actually. Mm, that's an interesting part.
Yeah, kind of rough how that Jedi died. I forget his name. Pretty intense. Yeah, he just doesn't take it. It's just like, no, you're gonna go get her. It's so funny. I love that. I love the little, you know, R2 unit, hit, like, light sensor thing that comes out. Hmm. See, for for her, when he says for her there, I thought that meant Leia, but I think Bale means for her as in for Padme. Oh. <laughs> Mind blown. I can't imagine how difficult it must be for George Lucas to see others making decisions on the fate of storylines of the screen. Uh, of his on-screen children. That's a good good point. You know, that's always a, been a topic of conversation. You know, he kind of had a skeleton planned out for or concepts planned out for 789 and they obviously went for a very different story. But, yeah, you know, things like this where we get stories of Leia, it'll be interesting, yeah, what he actually thinks of them. Like, you know, to sit and be like, what did you think of the Obi-Wan Kenobi show? It'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. Again, I like this. This is like, you know, it's not a direct thing, but it's like this is a nice little nod to the fact that, like, you know, when when Ray buried the lightsaber in the sand. Like, this is not that, like, it's a very symbolic thing to do that. And, um, yeah, it's interesting how Obi-Wan did it. <laughs> Lola revived more times than Qui Gon. That's really funny. Mm. Oh, I love him in his like semi Jedi outfit again. Such a cool outfit. <laughs> I love that. 
a random lady. He's like, what are you doing? Come, come on. So funny. So cool. Ooh, good stuff. Good stuff. There we go. All righty. One episode down. We can pause it there for now. One episode down. That was awesome. Very, very enjoyable. This is going to be – this is such a relaxing show today. This is awesome. Um, great. Yeah, that was a really good opener episode, obviously. Um, I th Yeah, and again – Got a brag. Saw it in, at celebration at the premiere with Alex, and it was just it was just insane. It was just you know, and of course the second you know the, you know the titles come up, the, the credits come up. I mean, you know, everyone just goes crazy. Oh, insane, insane. I'm glad they premiered the two episodes because it's like that definitely felt like that wasn't like enough of like a that's the premiere. Like I, I understand why they were like we're going to premiere the first two because it just I don't know. Just story-wise, it makes a lot sense, a lot, a lot more sense. Um, but anyway, we're gonna have a quick break. Uh, give you a couple minutes. I'm gonna stay here and chat for a bit. Uh, give you a couple minutes just to stretch your legs, go grab a some extra snacks. Uh, you know, just have a quick break for a couple minutes, and then we'll jump into episode two very shortly. But uh, yeah, again, great, great first episode. Um, Vivian. Lyra, we only saw Vivian and Lyra, Lyra Blair a little, a little bit at Celebration because, of, of course, she she's 10 years old in real life. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> um, you know, Vivian and Lyra, Lyra Blair in real life is 10 years old and, uh, you know, very overwhelming to come out to a, a crowd and uh, at the at the end of this premiere, so at the, at the end of episode two, um you know, the, the whole cast came out and, you know, we just all clapped and cheered for them. And then they brought out most of the people, um, yeah, like maybe the first, the main 10 really kind of people. And then at the end, they like did a special introduction, you know, for the very first time. Uh, let's welcome, uh, you know, Vivian Lyra Blair, Blair, Princess Leia. And she came out and just, it was just so insane. I might try and find a clip of it to post later because it was just such a beautiful moment of just her getting that spot. Like, again, I know like 10 years old, like that would be very overwhelming. Um, but it was just so beautiful to see. And she was just so amazed. And she just like ran straight to like, I think she ran to Bria first. I'm going to say Bria because I keep forgetting all their actor names. Um, and then she like went over, like kind of really hugged everyone and like everyone was like patting her and being like, yeah, well, you know, patting her on the back. And, um, she like, you know, went over to like Hayden and you and like stood with them. And it was just so beautiful. Like she obviously, like, you know, I, I would assume, a, you know, a kid in a cast that she would be very much taken care of. Um, and it was just beautiful. It was beautiful to see, you know, live. That was really, really insane. So make sure you have a stretch of the legs. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm, I'm like ready for part two. I'm, I'm ready to get going. I don't know if we need to stretch it all. I'm very happy that I got a better quality chair for this watch through because before the chair was tiny, but now I've got a nice comfy one. So living the dream. But uh, we're, we're ready. We're ready to start the second one. Now I'm, I'm doing this on the Disney Plus on my um my Xbox. So let me get this sorted first, and we'll get episode two up. Um. There we go, episode two. Fantastic. Okay. So we'll get it up shortly. We'll start it in about 30 seconds time. That was a great first episode. Great first episode, everyone. It was amazing, very enjoyable. <laughs> Sevilla, is you ready? Ready to rumble? Now that first episode was... It was like 56 minutes, but like the the um, credits last for like five minutes of that. Bring you cheer last week. Yeah. I, did I have it last week? I feel like I didn't have it last week. I feel like 
like last week I had this like yeah my usual chair but now I, I bought this one for like yeah because I, I got this like a couple of days ago so I don't I don't think I had it last week um but yeah much more much more enjoyable for the rewatch okay so make sure your uh episodes are on zero for part two or not part two. well hang on again I've confused that now because if it, the actual it says e2 part two so it is this is the our show the race side show is part one. This is all part one. But then episode two. Yeah, it's so confusing. This is we're watching episode two, essentially. Need to go to the outer rim. Hope to see you next week. Thank you so much for joining, Alex. It's been awesome for to have you here chatting again, especially because we enjoyed this premiere together. So it's such an awesome, like there's no one else on this planet that I saw it first with, except for Omar was there as well. Um which was awesome, but enjoy. I'll see you next week. Hope to see you then. Thank you so much for coming here. Yeah, it has parts. So it's like the, the race I show is called part one, but it's three episodes, but the Kenobi show is episode two, part two. Um, Cause if you see, if I use my action cam here, if I go up to the top here, there we go. So yeah, season one, E2 part two, um, but let's work it back down there. Um, but we'll continue on. We'll continue on now with episode two. So, if we're all ready again, we do this. Okay, if we're all ready, let's try. How do I get this spot on? All right, five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Alrighty. Part two. There you go. I feel like you can see too much of the screen there. Oh well, if you can you can kind of see where we're up to if <laughs> this is outrageous. <laughs> Live a normal life. chips on again anyone snacking on something anyone also don't skip the recap we'll, we're watching through the recap by the way here Enjoying the Doritos. Love it. I'm having some just normal chips. Crisps, you may call them. What do you call it? No, that's British. Crisps. Or is that or is that US? We call them chips. Again, great thing.
Perfect. This was such an awesome cameo. And this is what I like cameos to be. Because this is all we need. Like, this is all we get of a clone and of Tema Morrison. But it was perfect. And everyone went crazy with this. Everyone's like, oh my god, we saw the clone trooper. That's all you need. This is an excellent cameo. Tomorrow. Kenobi's daughter. That's so cool. You're looking at her. <laughs> Yeah, yours. <laughs> I love this kid. This kid has great confidence. I want a series about this kid. Yeah, so good, so good. Yeah, that would have been insane. So it's such a cool experience to like have your own daughter like play a, a, like. Because a... also, how old is she? She will be in her twenties, so you know she would have been a, like a child when he was doing. Hang on, yeah, she would have been like twenty. Yeah, she would have been like really young when he was doing. Prequels, so that would have been so cool. What did she uh, did close brains? Must have caused some conscious. Ah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Like, surely it deteriorates over time. I mean, we get the whole arcs and things of you can mutate. Hmm. <laughs> Little Lando. Yeah, because he kind of was like that, um, you know, bargainer. He was good at, like, making a deal. I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> Corellia. Why go to Corellia? <laughs> I hope that's how you meant that to say. Corellia. Why, why Corellia? Now, I always forget his Jedi name. Haja? I believe it's Haja. That, he's an interesting, like character to involve <laughs> Corellia why Corellia <laughs> Haja, yeah. I love everyone's face here. He's just like, he just knows that. He's just like, this guy's a fraud. This guy's a joke. Good dialogue here too. <laughs> that light is unforgiving. Great line again. Oh no! Oh no! Okay, I think we got sorry. I accidentally <laughs> messed the timer. 
Oh, I did it again. Oh my gosh. Gosh. Let's go from here. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, can I be with the blaster? Very strange, eh? So uncivilized with a blaster, hey? I, to be honest, I, this part confuses me a little bit. I'm like, he goes to like a meth lab? Like what? Like I understand why, but it's like, I, feel, I don't know. I feel like they could have done a, something else here. It's kind of random. This is a random scene, but kind of, kind of cool. Cool aliens here, actually, on this planet. Like, was that, like, a chemical lab attached to a prison? Like, what is this? I'm just a little confused at this scene. Cool combat. Better friend to start a life service I would like to be a yeah. Oh, right? That'd be cool. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> she looks so much like Leia, too. I really think she looks a lot like Leia. <laughs> Why should I trust you? She's a pretty cluey, 10 year old. It's awesome.
I've had a film there for to feed man. So I think, yeah, it does really work well, doesn't it? Such a, oh, yeah, it's just such a perfect dynamic, such a great relationship between them two. <laughs> Your Highness. Like, he speaks to her. Now, I've, I've just realized this too. He speaks to her like how he spoke to um, Padme. That's a good point. Um, I've, I, there's a few of my friends that are that are in the Tatooine scenes and the what's that planet? What's that planet where Roken is on? Like that planet? There's a couple of you're in the extras and they they're just massive Star Wars fans that you know got in. But I think I think it would be hard to get you know cast in it for the extras. But to be honest, the whole time we're watching this, I'm like every scene, I'm like looking at the extras as well, just as much as I'm looking at the main cast. I'm like, what are the extras doing? Well, you know, because it really does set up a good context. So, you know, you kind of don't want just, you know, strangers, randoms in there. You want you want actors because you know it makes a good context if there's like good extras, in my opinion. Hmm. But how cool would that be? I think it would actually be cooler to be an extra than like a part in this because then you just get to be like in a Star Wars environment and you just get to see all these actors do their thing. It'd be awesome. Yeah, from the um, the five, five, yeah, the five hundred first garrison. Yeah, they um, yeah, they're like a fan group of stormtroopers that like do screen accurate stormtrooper outfits, and um, yeah, they all played in that yeah finale of season one, which is such an awesome time because I mean, Star Wars fans are very committed to make things look perfect and to make things look screen accurate. So it makes sense. You get all these people that already know how to be a stormtrooper. But yeah, that is that is correct. <laughs> I already love how he's just like, yeah, whatever you want. Good burn. Good burn, Leia. Yeah. So it's just such an awesome, you know, appreciation, nod, and, yeah, support to the Star Wars fans. I agree. <laughs> Don't smell anything. Right? She's spot on. She's spot on, Carrie Fisher. It's so – she did it so well.
Like she's so inquisitive and and questioning of him, and it's so good. It's very yeah, it is very Carrie Fisher. It's very Leia. <laughs> Again, love this kid. Love this little kid. I never realized on the fifth brother that he's got this like echo to his voice. It's kind of cool. That's true. If he just shaved his beard, no one would recognize him. So sad. I'm just Leia. Great aliens. Great aliens in this show. This is a cool chase scene. I like it.
<laughs> shark, no, not shark, but dinosaur guy. <laughs> Hmm, interesting. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like, it's one thing to have, like, an opinion of, like, a character or, like, a choice of Star Wars. But, like, yeah, the, 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 just the pure hate toward is just incredibly unnecessary and in intense and, yeah, unwarranted. I totally agree. Because it's, yeah, you, you can have opinions and choices in Star Wars, but it's, like, when it's, like, you're hating on someone like it's just yeah it's, it's not what Star Wars should be I respect that I respect that That was a cool move. That was a cool move. Yeah, but I mean, that was a pretty cool move. Ooh, this is a good point. Yellow blasters. Yeah. Where else do we see yellow blasters? This is a cool shot, actually. When he has to use the force to, to catch her. This is a great, that was a great really close up of his face there. Because to me that was very Mustafa, like the red reflection on him. That's a good point. He just he just never used it, but it's not like he like consciously cut it off. But yeah, but Luke, yeah, that's an interesting point. That droid reminds me of AP five. I hope we get AP five in um in uh <laughs> in in Andor. A good character that was. Mapuzo. Mapuzo, that's the farming. That's the, yeah, that planet, right? Obi-Wan. Does he know? Does Haja know that's Obi-Wan? Like, from the past? The, hang on. Yeah. Did he mention his name was Obi-Wan just before? He must He must have known. He must have just known who Obi-Wan was from the war. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think it's the same same type as well.
This is, again, this is one of my favourite things is when, like, before I found Star Wars kind of scared to mention other pieces of Star Wars, if that makes sense. But this is a great little dialogue here and he's in where he says, you remind me of someone. She was fearless too. Like, so meaningful. Like, just a tiny piece of dialogue. So meaningful. Oh, so good. Here we go. Oh, we're disappointed because he used the name Ben Winston Teen Christ and it was never mentioned. Hmm. I don't understand why they uh, chose not to mention her. But... Yeah, I still would have loved to have some sort of a Satine thing. Like, again, it doesn't have to be a cameo or anything. But it's like some sort of, I don't know how, but in somewhere, contextually mention how, like, he knew Mandalore and he was, and like, you know, maybe that planet might come up and he would be like, ah, like, I know that place. You know, some, something like that. I really think they could have mentioned her. I think I was the only one who thought Ben meant Satine uh, when he mentioned Little Later reminded him of someone. Oh! Oh, wow, that is interesting. That's it. Yeah, that's an interesting take. And I, I never thought of that it could be Satine, which I, I don't think it is. I think it is Padme, but that's an interesting impression to, to, to take. I, that's, see the perspective of Star Wars. So many people have different opinions. Speaking of, this is a really dramatic scene when she's like, you don't know about Anakin. Fantastic scene. Yeah, it it does, doesn't it? Makes sense, Ben Solo.
Oh, I'm I'm getting goosebumps. I don't know if you can see that. You can't really see it. I'm getting goosebumps. That this is intense. Woo! Now, see what I mean before. I was mentioning how you know if they just showed the first episode, I feel like. I feel like it didn't end on a, like a grand premiere note, but that is a grand premiere note. Like the realization of Obi Wan, um, you know, finding out Anakin's alive, and then and then that cut to Anakin or Vader in the back to tank. So good, phenomenal. Uh, but were you not surprised that Obi Wan did not sense Anakin? Done? Yeah. Well, okay. Here's my thing. I feel like he. This happens in Star Wars somewhere else, but it's like, I feel like he knew. I feel like he kind of knew, but he was just in denial about it. Um, so, oh, so Ahsoka. Kind of like Ahsoka. She kind of, you know, in Rebels, she has that kind of journey where she kind of finds out about Anakin. But, you know, deep down, it's like they know they just don't kind of think about it. They don't put, like, thought to it that they know that. So I, but I still, I think it was more the confirmation for him. That was like the shocking part. Like this wasn't just like some terrible feeling that like he's, you know, alive. I, I think it's, yeah, I think it's just a shock of the confirmation that it's true. Um, but let's have another quick break, another couple minutes to uh, stretch and uh, yeah, have a stretch, have, grab, grab another drink, grab some uh, more snacks. We are on the final stretch. We've got one more uh, episode to get through today. And then we've got next week as well, which is going to be awesome. Where we're going to finish it, the series, uh, obviously. Um, but I'm going to have a quick break too. But as we do that, what should I put on the screen as we do that? Mon Mothma. I'll put, I'll put Mon Mothma on with some background music as I take a quick break for a couple minutes and we'll jump back into it.
Thank you, Mon Mothma. <laughs> oh, welcome back. We had a stretch of the legs. A uh, little break. Matthew's back! Oh, you, you came in in our break time. We're just having a quick break. We're about to start episode three. Exciting. Exciting stuff, but welcome back. <laughs> it's your thumbnail next week. Oh, amazing. So, so good. Uh, what's been happening? I grabbed some chocolate while we're gone. Um, America, do you have this? Do you have this? Oh, America or Canada, do you have this brand? Do you remember? Well, Cadbury. I feel like everyone knows Cadbury there. You have cake. You came back with cake, Matthew. I love that. Yeah, was it? Yeah, the intermission elevator music. Yeah, that's what I was going for. Um, <laughs> that's good, isn't it? Um, awesome. Yeah. No, kind of. To be honest, Canada and Australia like pretty similar. A lot more similar than US, I think. Like us and US. Okay, we've got a question here. That's a good question. Back to where the we're like, you know, Obi Wan knowing. That's a, that's actually another good point. He knew Anakin was dead, and that's who he senses. But he hadn't sensed Darth Vader yet. But I feel like I feel like he did because you know he was technically Darth Vader when he you know was battling him on Mustafar. So like I feel like he sensed him before. <laughs> for save the chancellor okay I got chocolate got some more water let's get part two uh, part three ready <laughs> okay so Mm -mm. we're not ready yet um but uh yeah gra grab your disney plus up oh, i actually just went out of it grab your disney plus up we'll be starting part three real soon how do we get back to the there we go there we go so what do we think is he did he know did did obi-wan know anakin was dead uh, well, sorry, not dead, but alive. I think he actually thought Anakin was dead. The wounds were very serious, but I like to think that if in case he thought uh, for a moment that he was alive. Mm. I think he thought the wounds would not let him uh, never, never even hold a lightsaber again. That's true. That's true. He probably didn't expect him to be in, in like a full suit to be able to like be full power. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm still the thinking of like, Obi-Wan knew Anakin. I don't know. I feel like for a long time he thought he killed Anakin, but then I think deep down in denial, he was like, what if he lived and kind of was like, there, there is some sort of option for him to be alive. I don't know. His expression at the end, part two is surprise. I guess, yeah, yeah. So I get, I think, I think maybe that's more of a confirmation. Like, I feel like he's deep down, he might have had the sensation that he could be alive, but then he's, he is surprised. You're, you, you're right, Matt. He's surprised. But so I, but I think that's a, he's like shocked that it's true. So I feel like it's in his head, but it's, he's shocked that it is true. I was surprised that he hadn't heard of this Vader figure from the Holonet and put two and two together. But then again, he's li he's literally living under a rock. That's a good point. You know, clearly he's like around the town a lot. It's like, you know, maybe he sees it somewhere. But also maybe Vader is really a lot more of a, I don't know, mysterious figure to, to people. You know, people know he's scary, but people would, I feel like, much more frequently talk about the Inquisitors and the Grand Inquisitors and Stormtroopers. And, you know, maybe a bit less of just the just Vader uh, himself because he's, yeah, I feel like he's a bit more mysterious. You know, he really only comes out for the for the big jobs. So, I don't know. That's a good question. That is a, a good, good thing to think about. 
Look, I'm Rick. I really think if he felt his brother was alive, he never would have been able to stay in isolation. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, see, there's so there's like two sides of the argument. There's there's a lot of pros and well, you know, not pros and cons, but like there's a lot of good evidence for either that he absolutely didn't know or he did. Maybe he abs yeah. If if he absolutely knew he would have been trying to do more about it. Or maybe I mean, that's the thing. He tried to do something about Anakin's dark side. And it like nothing worked out for him and a lot went wrong for him. He lost Satine, he lost the order, like Anakin's just like killing all these kids. Like I can't understand where he's like, don't know if I can do this again. Like, don't know if I can save this one. But it's interesting. It's a interesting. I mean, the very first use of the Empire. Yeah. So it's like, I know everyone know like, I think everyone knows him, but, you know, maybe he's not the kind of the talking point around the town because, you know, you know, it, it, clearly Inquisitors can just easily fly somewhere and walk around where it's like, I feel like you don't see Vader doing that a whole bunch or we know of, but I, you know, I, I, absolutely. I think people know of his existence. Yeah, well, uh, locked away using force for long sun light to switch to save little light of falling. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, he wasn't sitting there meditating and like feeling through the force, which, you know, obviously Jedi meditate a lot to feel things in the future. So it's not like he was actively trying to feel if Anakin was still alive. So that's a, that's a really good point. He wasn't kind of active in the force. Um, but uh, we'll get started here shortly in a minute. Um, so this is a very good theory. I like how everyone's got like a slightly different take on this. Very interesting. But make sure you grab your, uh, put put your Disney Plus on. We're going from the zero seconds of part three or episode three, sorry. Okay, it's pretty much both. E E3 part three. But let's, let's have another go and have a watch of our final episode for today. But before we get into that, one more thing that I uh, would like to mention before we watch that, seeing as we're all here, is make sure... Wow, oh, hang on. That's, this is really throwing me this comment. <laughs> That's a really interesting thing. I need, like, a whole show to unpack that. That's really interesting. Not, some friends who don't care about Star Wars at all yet love The Last Jedi. There you go. It, I mean, it was a, it was a pretty... It was a pretty crazy movie and you know it's, it's kind of okay to watch on its own final episode for today yeah final episode for today we're going to finish off the next three next week uh but this isn't the last time we will be doing a live watch through together because on september 17th which is a saturday night we are doing the rogue one watch through so september 17th which is in like four weeks time it is the saturday night before and or comes out and or comes out uh, the 21st, which is a Wednesday, and the Saturday night prior, we're going to be doing a Rogue One rewatch. So Saturday night, so it's not our usual show time, not usually on a Monday. Uh, Saturday night, it's like prime time. It's like, you know, that's like a good movie night, so that's why we're doing it then. Uh, there will still be a normal show on the on the Monday as well, uh, but we're going to do a special watch of Rogue One on that Saturday night. We're going to be It's going to be the same time as this, so it's going to be at uh, it's 11 p.m. for me, but that's 6 p.m. PST and 9 p.m. ET in the States as well. So make sure you put that one in the calendar, 17th of September, which is the Saturday right before uh, ro the Rogue One. We're going to watch Rogue One the Saturday before Andor comes out. Absolutely. Question. Aggressive question. Can I be six episodes? So three today, three next time, and one afterwards. Three. What do you mean? It's wait, can we six episodes? So three today and three next time. Yes, correct. And what's the one afterwards? What's the one afterwards? The documentary. Oh, that's a good point. Because I actually I've been thinking about that. Because the week after the documentary comes out on the September the eighth. So let me know if we should do a watch of the documentary together. That might be interesting. Because I know that comes out on the Tuesday. So we would have to do it like the week after, or we could do a special documentary watch. But let me know. We could do a, uh, a documentary. I, Joel, I still don't understand what you're saying. Three today and then three next time. That is six. That is the six. Oh, seven. Okay, there we go. Oh, God, stress me out there. I was like, what? The six? Three plus three is the six episodes. 
There we go. Yes, it comes out September 8th. Um, let me know if we should do a watch party for the documentary because I was, starting, I was talking about that at the start of the show. It's, it looks fascinating. It looks really moving and emotional. I'm assuming it's going to be like a one hit thing, you know, as in like a, like an hour and a half or something. So maybe we could do a watch party for that. That would be, that'd be kind of fun to do. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of BTS behind the scenes footage and shows. So, but uh, yeah, let me know. We could, we could be doing that as well. <laughs> oh, good. You, you stressed me out so much, Drop. That was so stressful. Oh, it's like, oh my God. I've done it wrong. All good. So yes, part three, let's get started. Oh my gosh. But yes, I'll leave this ticker down the bottom here. Live September 17th, the Saturday before uh, Andor comes out on the Wednesday. Rogue One Watch Party. Be there. It's going to be the same time. So 6 p.m. PST, 9 p.m. ET. But let's get into part three, episode three of Kenobi of six episodes. Um, and let's get started. So what am I, what am I pressing play on? Okay, here we go. All right, ready and three, two. No, I'm going to go from five. Five, four, three, two. One. Awesome. I like forget what happens in this episode, to be honest. It kind of all melds into one for me. Don't skip the recap. Don't skip the recap. Oh. Previously you are. <laughs> see okay this is what this is like i was talking about this with my friend the other day about you know the storyline of kenobi there's something about reva is it reva 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 like I really like the idea and concept of her character. Love it. You know, the pad one, the whole, you know, she's like traumatized as a pad one and then trying to get back and revenge and all that kind of stuff. Love that story. I think that's really clever. I think it's really interesting. But this, I, I just feel like it was odd to put it in Kenobi. Like, I understand, like, because, yeah, he's like a Jedi and, like, obviously was with Order 66. But I just feel like there's something... I don't know. It, it, it could have been somewhere else, but I don't know what other show they could have that or, you know, if they just did a completely new show, how that would work. But I don't know. It, at some at some point, especially for the finale episode, episode six, to me, that storyline detracts. But it's not like it's a bad – her character or storyline is bad, but I just feels like it's it kind of fits awkwardly here. God, thank you. I appreciate it, Dave. <sighs> Part three. Here we go. How long, how long is this one actually? Forty-five. And only, only like there's like six minutes of credits. So maybe um. So maybe um. Thirty. Yeah, thirty-nine minutes. I think you need Ruva to have some someone who's direct, effective. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's a good point. That is a good point. And maybe it's less of like, I don't know if she, if it's like, oh, she shouldn't be in it at all. But I think also, can we just appreciate this scene where everyone's trying to be like, Qui-Gon, where are you? So good. So good. Um, but there was some part of the finale where it's like the, the AB storyline didn't work for me. But yeah, I think I agree. Maybe not like take her out completely. But it's like, I don't know, have her in some other way. Yoda. Yeah. That's the thing I, the show does so well of is just like, you know, Obi-Wan dealing with his guilt and shame. And that's why I, before the show came out, that's what I was hoping what would happen. And they really nailed that. Yeah. Yeah, she's a good, yeah, she like represents that. Represents that. Yeah, this Darth Vader assembly here is awesome.
That's awesome. It's epic, epic. I love that. I love that Vader's castles on Mustafa. Just makes sense. Mm. This, is, this is a question I've been thinking on for like way too long. It'll be interesting. I think that'll definitely be answered or, you know, we'll see it in season three, hopefully. <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect, hey. It's funny. I agree. His his description of the force he was really interesting, the way he like describes it to her. <laughs> that is actually a really funny hot take, Joel. <laughs> I keep forgetting the names of these planets. We just talked about the name of this. Um, tall? Is it cool? Is this tall? Cool planet. You know what this, also, this music here, if you're watching it live, this music here is very, um, think of the episodes where, like, a Jedi crash in the Clone Wars. Uh, those Clone Wars episodes where they, like, go to some, like, outer rim and they hate the like the help the like Lima people and there's all those those kinds of episodes. That's like almost exactly the same music. Exactly the same. It sounds so cool. Mapuzo. Mapuzo. Yes. Where's tall? What's tall? What am I thinking of tall? Mapuzo. He says it just then. Huh. <laughs> to the Wikipedia. Let's go to the Wikipedia. Oh yes, that's right. That's what he was he was saying there from tall. Thank you. Thank you, Sevilla. Goodness. Thank you. Appreciate it.
one thing uh, people are misreading, saying how the show needs to be more colourful or have more colour, is the Empire era. Everything is in decay, plants, people, and it matches everyone's killed in depression. Totally agree. Oof. Dramatic scene when he sees Anakin. But yes, I totally agree, Sevilla. I think, you know, the darkness, the grayness has to be there to, like, emphasize the, the period of Star Wars that we in. It's cool. It's a cool moment seeing Anakin there. That's a good point. Yeah, I, I would agree. So this is interesting as well. Like a bit of, you know, the Quins Inquisitors are like, you know, the Sith, Darth, well, not Sith, they're just Dark users. And they like that. It's like shocking that she got to speak to Vader. That's what I mean. Like as much as Vader's like, everyone knows Vader, like in the galaxy, but it's like, he's kind of mysterious. Like everyone knows him, but he's like in the back. If a Qu Inquisitors like can't just call him up, it's like, Obviously, the guy isn't around, you know, in townships all the time. Poor baby. <laughs> Squabbling kids. That's such a good point. <laughs> <coughs> That's why I love how these pods eject from the top of the tower. Yeah, but it's like they have a relationship with him. But it's like, you know, the fifth brother was like, you rang him? It was like a big deal to like talk to him because he's obviously maybe hard to get on the phone. <laughs> I agree. Absolutely. Vader is like a, sh like a shadow. Ooh, that's a good way to say that. That was a random moment where he, like, snaps at her. That was, like, random. <laughs> it was a cute scene. A lot of people are missing the fact that Reva is not supposed to be a logical character. She's driven by anger and rage. People don't... Think straight. Yeah, that's a good point. She's just going off emotion. She's just like doing what she needs to do to like, you know, get it out. She's furious. She's got a lot of hurt. It's like driving her. So I, I agree, Joel. That's a good point. It's not it's not meant to be logical. Oh, the whole like this whole thing that like she pretends they're father daughter. So nice. <laughs> that's a weird story. Ah, Freck. What do you guys think of Freck? Interesting character. Great alien. Uh, I, I don't know if we've seen this alien before. 
Rick, I think Vader is manipulating all the Inquisitors, so he's allowing them access to playing one off another. Oh, that's a good point, actually. He's doing it purposely. So they do do that and just squabble and just kind of fight amongst themselves. Right? Don't. <laughs> right? Tall. There we go. Frick. Luma. <laughs> the embarrassing Thanksgiving uncle. <laughs> right? They're like, it's family, you gotta be nice. But then they, they say something that's like really unhinged and like not okay. And you're like, uh, what? I love this. Love small talk with stormtroopers. It's such a great scene. Every time, it makes me cringe when he goes, you, they know what they're doing, Leia. Luma, damn it, her name's Luma. Great cover up though, great way to cover that up. <laughs> Why? Oh, it's so nice. It's so nice. <laughs> Are these the most clueless storm trees in Africa? Right? Like, it's like, I don't know how popular of a name Leia is, but it's like, I can just not put it together there. <laughs> Burn. Every storm trooper is clueless. See, okay, again, who put this up before about her having forced feelings? That's, like, I, I would agree that, that here she's, like, got those forced feelings again. Like, she knew very deeply instinctively, instinctually that, yeah, that's what she said. You knew my mother. Now, that was an interesting line. Are you my real father? Hmm. I'm trying to think. The idea was Leia. I did not know her real mother because back then Padme was alive. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think, you know, obviously she like mentions it and she's like, oh, yeah, I like, no. So this is interesting. What do we all think about this Ben having a brother? Was that in Legends? Was that somewhere that I don't know? Um, is that going to be picked up in further everyone media? I 
I don't know. I really, yeah, I get what you mean, but it's like I really definitely think these moments with Leia where she's like saying something that's really deeply truthful. Like I think that's like, yeah, her having that connection to the Force. Ah, okay. There we go. I knew, I knew, I knew you guys would know. Later in the lore, I think Legends uh, hit the hit a brother that was name was Ben. There with Kate. There we go. See that that would make sense. I wonder if that'll like I don't know come up again. You ever meet him or something? Welcome. We're up to episode three. Ah, oh, frick. They got him. <laughs> yeah. The stormtrooper gets cut on the wire. Yeah. Wire? Laser? I don't know. I love how they just couldn't walk around. Like that is so easy to walk around it. Why do they have to wait to 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 like break it? Female stormtroopers. Ah, Tala. Here we go. Let's go, let's go. Right, right, yeah. The Star Wars has to have those moments, though, where you're just like, why did you not do that very obvious thing to, like, solve that sort of problem? Maybe desperation, yeah, maybe. Synced up, good stuff. Again, the best thing about these rewatches is looking at the side characters. Like that, that Imperial just to the right of the future brother there was so intense about pointing on the map. That was so intense. <laughs> right? And I only just realized he has like a, um, he's got like an echo on his voice as well, but he definitely sounds like he needs a lozenger. Like, just give that man a cup of tea or something. It's like he is not. Coped. He's not. He's struggling to speak well. <laughs> right. Everything comes back. Everything makes so much more sense. Is that I'm actually really enjoying this. We watch. Re wow. Re rewatch. Everything is so circular. It comes back. Like that. Yeah. Like what we were saying before. The whole river stuff just makes so much more sense now. And this is awesome. I love this this like these next couple of scenes are, are pretty cool. <laughs> Lola's a pretty cool droid. That was a good good design. <laughs> Leia, it's okay, Leia.
he is. You can really see, you know, when they first met on Dayu, like he was, you know, very like, it's a mission and get it done because he was so on edge. But you can really see him warm up. And I think because, you know, all the emotions come back of like how much she's like Padme and all that comes back to him. So, yeah, the connection really develops quite well. Like I think it would have been odd if he was like immediately like that. I think that would have been like too obvious, like not re realistic. So I like how, yeah, they, he slowly warms. And then, you know, in this episode three, he's like so kind to her and comforting to her. I agree, Joel. I wonder who was the snitch, is the snitch who saw them get in. Yeah, that's a good point. Who was it? Yeah, Ned B. Nitty B. Now, this is cool. This is one of the coolest parts. The path, the coolest part of like the series introduces to. That's a good point. I would, I, I think so. I think so. Like, look how empathetic he's being to Leia being afraid and all that, you know. And I know Leia's not like a Jedi, so it's not like he's trying to teach her to be a Jedi. So it's kind of a bit different, but he is so empathetic here. But this path is so cool. This idea of the path. Quinlan, I again, fantastic use of cameos. I feel like we're getting misinterpreted of what a cameo should be. Cameos don't have to be like, oh, this character is in this show now. Like, this is a good use of a cameo because sorry, it's a great, great quote. But you know, name drop, talk him about him for a moment, and it's a fantastic like cameo connection there. There we go, Jabeem. He's important in the legends. There you go. Maybe they kind of showed that as well. You know, when Vader comes in in this in this planet, it's like pretty intense. Come on, Ned, you legend. <laughs> Who's she talking to there again? I forget who. Is she sort of broken? Or no, there's like a dude at the end of the tunnel or something. Who's she talking to there? That's a really good point. That's a really good point. And, you know, back when the OT was created, you know, George took a lot of inspiration from the world wars um you know obviously the the imperial kind of uh co outfits and, and co uh, costuming of the imperial like rankings is very nazi kind of inspired so they all yeah george always took inspiration from the wars 
So this is a great moment when he realized that's right, I forgot these moments. When when he realizes Yeah, that he so he's sensing Vader here. So it's like I think he's sensing like is he sensing Anakin or is he sensing someone with the dark side coming? I th I believe so. I think I think for these things, yes, because they want, you know, a lot of the time when it is like him walking and like these shots, I think it is because they want that Anakin, you know, that Hayden Christensen f like feel, look and you know, the way he holds his hands and moves his leg like it's you, you can tell. So I believe it is. It's it's Vader time. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you think it's Anakin? He thinks it's Anakin. This was also, this is vicious. Like, this is, like, people talking about, you know, they want Vader to be more, like, hardcore. This, this like, hits it. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Bit, like, definitely has that that f the the feeling, that intimidation, menacing. Very good word for that. Even the way he whips around his head there is like terrifying. I don't know how like a movement can be scary, but it's just like terrifying. Ooh, does seeing Vader do all these awful atro atrocities make it harder to swallow Anakin being redeemed by the end? At least uh, being happy, a uh, happy Force Ghost at the end of Ep Six. You know what? That's actually a really good question because. Yes, he's redeemed by Luke at the end and that, you know, he comes to the light. But it's like, he's like incredibly violent. Like, it, I think it, yeah, I think it's not like it makes it unbelievable, but it's like it makes it harder to swallow. I do agree. that That's a great question, though. Another great line coming up here. Next, it's the next standoff. That's the great line. <laughs> Ooh. I know it feels a little different, but I love the look and sound and just feel of the lightsabers in this show. Like it just, like I think they use act like LEDs like an LED saber for it. And you can really tell, like, yeah, the reflection, everything is just so real and raw and it feels so good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's interesting. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. 
This is some of the, that's like one of the best lines. You know, I am what you made me. I talk about guilt. Talk talk about a guilt trip. God. Go get him, Ned. Go go help him, Ned. Like, look at the colours. So good. You know what's something that, uh, when watching this for the first time, I was like, this jewel is kind of weak. It's kind of odd. It kind of felt small and not as dramatic as I thought. But knowing the whole series and seeing the finale, it makes sense because it's kind of like it kind of wanted us to feel like it was quite small and, you know, incomplete because I think that's what makes the finale duel so satisfying because it's really like, you know, Kenobi's back to full power. They're like full force power there. And it's so dramatic and cinematic and just big drama where this feels very small and, and not as charged or yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. It, it, it felt slow and, you know, even the movements are quite simple and slow. Exactly. Yeah. Like he's not in that head space, that mindset to be, to be, dueling right now like he was purely just running away here like he's not trying to fight him like he was trying to just defend himself here yeah so it's like i i it was kind of a criticism for me at the start not seeing the full series but now knowing that end the end duel i'm like oh no this makes sense now why this was like because it shows us that he, you know obi-wan is quite weak in the force he hasn't used it for 10 years and he's still got a lot of fear and you know in him but you know by the end of the series we have that character arc and we kind of have that journey he goes on <laughs> that's why it would have worked out better as a movie yeah, yeah. maybe i kind of kind of agree with you there i agree i was a little worried uh, about how small and clunky was the first three episodes absolutely totally agree so it's like a lot of people were like, oh, you know, every episode wasn't massive. But I'm like, no, I think it was meant to be small now. Now that I, yeah, now we've seen it all. It was meant to be small. It was a hate, hate take? I, do you mean hot take? Kenobi is the best use of Vader since uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think, you know, Vader in Rogue One was like a very much just like a connection. Like it was just kind of a nod kind of thing. <laughs> my god that's so true Chrissy wake up <laughs> like this is morbid this is like when I saw this I was like what are we doing here this is jarring <laughs> Most hot takes are also hate takes. I love what Vader is doing right now. It's pretty, pretty much. It's also so Anakin. Yeah, but like very just rage filled, isn't it? It's kind of. It is like confronting. It's like, oh, jeez.
And like, again, this moment, I was so confused. I was like, just jump, just jump over the fire. Just like walk around it, walk through it probably. But now I understand, like, I don't think, you know, as much as I definitely don't think Obi-Wan was near, like he didn't want to fight, but even Vader at this point, I'm not sure if he was ready to fight. I think now that like Vader's like, oh my gosh, I have Obi-Wan. He's like right here. But he wasn't like, he hadn't got his full plan yet, Vader, I feel. That's why he didn't pursue it. The whole scene Rogue One is still the bit. Yeah, yeah, like it's still awesome, but it's like, yeah, obviously it's not a massive story part. You know, as we get of like Vader in here. There you go. Don't know those two names, but I'm I'm sure they're 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 good comics. But I I love that. Are they are they in the are they com not composers? It's not music writers of the of the Vader comics maybe. Um, but there you go. That's interesting. Maybe we took some inspiration there. <laughs> a sturdy way of saying it looks like the comics I wonder if Fade was disappointed by Kenobi he wanted a challenge and Kenobi wasn't giving it to him yeah yeah that's what I mean like I feel like Vader wasn't fully satisfied there oh wow I was not mentally prepared for that to be the end of the episode well we have so much to talk about the stream isn't ending just yet so stick around even though the episode part 3 just finished that was awesome that was an awesome episode Let's debrief that because we have so many thoughts. Clearly, everyone has so many thoughts. Let's give that a pause. Also, let's appreciate that Ewan McGregor is an associate, is, is an executive producer. It's awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, fantastic. What a good. Let's take this out of the stream now as well. Um, yeah, what a great first three episodes. But yeah, there's so much of that which I actually had quite a lot of gripe with when I first saw it. But like what we've been saying is it kind of came very full circle for me by the end and a lot of it made sense in the end, which I think, excuse me, was it, was it, was it Sevilla? Was it you that said before? What, yeah. Would it work better as a movie? I think that's, it's not like I'm like, oh, it didn't work as a series, but it's like, I feel like just for the circular way they did the writing of everything, it would have made sense to have it in one sitting as a movie. As like, again, Lord of the Rings did it and they were hugely popular. And it's like, you can do two and a half hour movies. You can do that. You can do extremely long movies. I think that would have worked really, really well. <laughs> uh, there's a reason I'm pure much doesn't sound until the end. Vader is not Vader himself at the moment. He's sloppy. He's being more Anakin than Vader. Yeah. Like I said, I feel like he's, he's kind of, he him Vader himself is like, Oh, everyone's like he now. I gotta like, what do I do with it? Do I make him suffer? Do I take him in? Do I kill him? Like, you know, I feel like he's still figuring it out. Kenobi series that works better on a rewatch now that we have all the thing. Yeah, this is fun. I'm like, I'm glad we're doing this now because I'm enjoying this like incredibly so. So I hope you, I hope you have enjoyed it and kind of discussing it as well. It's been really, really cool. It was a fantastic one sitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. You you went and saw it in, uh, in I'm assuming in Toronto, in Canada, um, with Deborah Chow and Hayden as well, which was – that would have been insane, Matthew. Very, very jealous of that. Very jealous. You went to elevate to those three episodes. Some of it was slow and illogical and the action was clunky, but everything was held together by Ewan's amazing performance. Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, I totally agree with it. Ewan is just incredible. He's, a, he's the most perfect Obi-Wan we could ever want He's so, so good at a fantastic performance. Um, yeah, I, I, I semi-agree where it's like, I definitely agree that, yeah, there's slow parts and there's kind of maybe some clunky parts. But um, it kind of, that kind of makes sense to me that some parts needed to be slow and not as, you know, he he's not in touch with the Force. He's not he's not as cool and smooth as maybe as a character. Um, but it kind of gets to that point by the end of the series. So, yeah, interesting take. Palpatine is there at the end to repress Anakin and make sure he's not coming out. Yeah, I, I agree. And we'll, I think we'll unpack that more next week. A lot of thoughts of that. Of um, Yeah, it's, I, I found that an interesting kind of little situation there at the end when Palpatine, Palpatine like rings Anakin up, rings Vader up and was like, hey, what are you doing? Don't do it. And he's like, okay. We'll unpack that next week. Are you happy the series was directed by one vision, Deborah Chow? It would have been interesting to see other directors 
uh, take part to ver- well directed to take part to vary the look and feel of each episode. Great question. I aggressively, viciously support that it was so important that not only all Star Wars series, but this series in particular had to be by one director. And I'm so happy it was Deborah Chow. She is such a fantastic director and she did like the directing in this is so good because it it creates this, you know, Star, Star Wars is new to the, apart from Clone Wars, live action Star Wars is new to the episodic format and like it, having different directors kind of worked for the movies the sequels I don't think that worked having different directors but you know um the original trilogy had a couple of different directors that's okay and that worked out but episodic live action Star Wars I think needs to have the same directors for the whole for the whole show for the show I as much as I think um, you know, if we think about, you know, Mando does it. They they have a different director uh, for like every episode. They might have, you know, some episodes that are like done by the same directors, but you know, it's very diverse and it's it's hard because it's like I enjoy every one of those actors actors. I enjoy every one of those directors' uh, portrayal and direction of the episode, but it it just feels way too disassociated for me. Even though if it's the same storyline, it's too disassociated if it's like different directors for every episode. So I think it was so important, especially for such a character focused, like, you know, we just, it's an intimate, this is an intimate look into Obi-Wan's psyche, this show. And it needed to have that one vision behind it. And and again, Deborah Chow, such a brilliant mind and that she really worked hard on this. And like I just said before, Ewan, Ewan was a, um, was an executive producer. So he had a lot to do with the direction and, you know, I'm sure he was, you know, behind the scenes there going, we need to be doing this. We, uh, you know, we got to make sure we're doing X, Y, Z. So I really think, you know, I feel like shows like the Mandalorian could probably continue doing the multiple director feel. Um, but I think moving forward, Star Wars shows that, that there's a big difference between the, the continuous feeling of Obi-Wan to the, the, the you know, the feeling continuity we got in other shows like Boba and that. And I feel like, you know, that, wasn't there for me in the other shows but I felt it a lot stronger in this show but that's my long re- response to that question but that's a fantastic question Dave I like it that's okay that's okay thank you so much uh so again next week we got part part two of this Toronto's dip yeah so is she from Toronto as well there we go I think it depends on the series yeah so that's what I mean so it's like it, like Obi-Wan because this was an intimate because this was an intimate series of the one thing I think it needed to be one, but I think something like Mando where it is quite, the storyline is based quite episodically. I feel like it could work there. Yeah, exactly. Well, I almost said the exact same thing. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Rick had to be one director. Deborah was a gr- was great, especially with the character stuff. Maybe too much shaky cam on the action. And, <laughs> yeah. And phasing of the action scenes in the early episodes felt a bit, um, felt a step below Mando. Yeah, it's it was a very different. Um, it was a yeah, it was it was a different style, definitely. But uh, I yeah, I I enjoyed it. But I, you know, I like that take as well. The the shaky cam, the shaky cam. I love it. I love it. I love it. But um, yeah, th- this this series was so. I don't know. It just had so much heart, and it's obviously because we have quite a. You know, Obi Wan is such a main character of Star Wars and such a prevalent ca- character in Star Wars. Uh, where a show like Mandalorian, obviously, new character, and even a show like Boba, like Boba's, you know, oh, you could argue just as famous. Everyone knows Boba Fett, and you know, at least knows what he looks like. Um, but you know, obviously, we haven't had all the content and information about him. So, you know, even that, not that like he's a new character, but like the stories and the and the information will get him getting about him more on screen was, was kind of new to us. So yeah, it, it is interesting that this was kind of, this show was really felt quite different to me um, because it's, it was coming from such a familiar place, a familiar, familiar place. Australia. Yay. There you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. I need to look into her more because she is such a creative mind. 
curious though how future series will go. Will they be more serialized or more episodic? Yeah, that's a good point. I th- I think they're like um I believe Ahsoka they have like a handful of I don't think it's as many as like Mando ha- Mando season one was like a different ep- director every episode, but um I th- I think there's a couple of different um directors in Ahsoka I believe and I don't think I think we have we have Leslie Headland writing Acolyte but I'm not sure about the directors yet <laughs> I'd better go explain my opinion yeah yeah absolutely absolutely depends on the series yeah I, I totally agree I have to say I love the John Williams Obi-Wan theme and how it was laced through the shadow uh, through, through the shows and it was back to more traditional orchest- orchestral score yeah, fantastic scoring, fantastic thing. I think they did really well writing that one. Felt very Obi-Wan. Very, very Obi-Wan. That sounding, I think. Five directors, seven episodes. There we go. And uh, who were the double ups? Rick Famuyiwa? Was that him? Well, I think he had two, maybe. There's a double up somewhere. Um, but yeah, that, it, it will be interesting how they go with it. I think they're still maybe finding their feet with how they do do these directions and and how they do hand out these directorial roles um because yeah like what we're saying i think both work i think this really worked that deborah was the one director but then i think i love seeing the different feelings of the different direct like bryce dallas howard is a fantastic director and rick and who else you know dave filoni making his like directional debut all that kind of stuff. Rick and Deborah were double ups. There you go. Uh, it felt so. It felt so fresh. I love that. I love that. It's a good, good take. Well, very shortly we'll start to um, we'll start to wrap up here because this has been almost a three hour stream. It's been fantastic. Now down below, make sure September seventeenth. We are doing a Rogue One rewatch. So that's in a couple of weeks' time. It's the Saturday night before uh, Andor comes out on the Wednesday. So Saturday night. So we still have a usual show on Tuesday. But Saturday night before Andor, we are doing a Rogue One rewatch. It's going to be very, very entertaining. And, of course, uh, next week we are doing the part two of this live stream. Uh, we're going to be doing watching episodes four, five, and six of Kenobi to wrap up the series. And I'm sure we'll have even more comments to say uh, about the series when we get to the final part of this rewatch. It's going to be phenomenal. So as always, make sure you subscribe and like if you've enjoyed this show. Uh, and if you if you want to, hopefully, if you've got some Star Wars circles around, be sure to share uh, these links um, and, and share the channel to them. It will be greatly appreciated. It really helps me out a whole bunch if you're liking the content. Uh, but go check me out over on my social medias. Every It's all on Twitter and Instagram at The Rayside. Uh, and you can find me over there. And I'm kind of, I kind of always post Star Wars related things over there. Um, and then as well, I mentioned this last week. We have the Kenobi, the end of Kenobi next week. And then in the start of September, the month of Andor, we are having a whole three-part series called the Andor Antics. It's a three-week-long series of shows on the race side where we're going to be doing Cassie and Andor-themed things. Well, Andor, but also like other people in Andor-themed things. Um, so make sure you are subscribed. You hit that bell. You know when I'm going live because we've got some amazing – we're going to do baking. We're making a lot of things. Uh, action cam is going to be all over the place. It's going to be really, really exciting. We're doing more things that are not just at the desk. So it's going to be really, really fun. So make sure you do subscribe and it, uh, and you know, you're, you're in and amongst it all. King for Rogue One. Yes. It's going to be really, it's going to be a fun rewatch that one also, you know, and then Andrew comes out that following Wednesday. It's going to be so, so fun. So make sure you are subscribed to everything that's going down here. It is going to be so, so fun. Share it around. Um, and I can't wait for next week. So again, thank you for, if you remembered, I tried to, I tried to let you all know that it was an hour earlier than our usual show. Same thing next week, 6 PM PST, 9 PM ET. We're going to be live so we can fit in the, this massive show in that time. So make sure, uh, you're in there. Yes. Action cam will be back. We'll be, we'll be action cams going everywhere. It's going all, all over the place next week. Uh, not next week, weeks after that. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for Dave and everyone for dropping by. Thank you, Joel Sevilla, 
Matthew, Burz, Rick. I'm trying to read everyone's names. So, yeah, somebody will be dropping in the comments. Appreciate it so much. Well, that is it for me. Make sure you tune in next week. We're going to finish this Kenobi series watch. It was so fun today. It was so, so enjoyable. And we'll continue with 4, 5, and 6 next week. So make sure you subscribe. Get ready. Get your snacks ready. I, I had like chips and chocolate. Make sure you are stacked up on your snacks for the show next week because it's so fun to be here with you and enjoy it. And I'm sure we'll have a very big debrief of the Kenobi series after that. Um, one last thing before we go. With the uh, new Obi-Wan Kenobi behind the scenes documentary coming out, would you want a live stream of that and a live watch through when that comes out? So that's a Thursday show. Would you want that? Let me know in the comments uh, if that would be uh, interesting to do and I can get that organized because we might, that might be interesting to watch all together because seeing as we all watch the, the whole series together the next week, it might be cool to, to watch the behind the scenes as well. So let me know if that would be cool and you would be interested. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching along. Make, again, make sure you subscribe. Follow me everywhere. And as always, may the force be with you. And I always forget to say my own catchphrase. Always choose the right side. When I did eat the Pringles, I did actually leave a bunch in here and I didn't eat them all. I did try one today, but it was pretty stale. So I think there's still some in there, but I think I'm going to leave them. I don't think I'm going to eat them. I'm scared to get food poisoning if I do that. See you next week.